So recently we uh, looked at uh, the question, we asked the question what happens if we quantify uh, trend sequences in financial markets. There's all, we all know that we have these tiny fluctuations on very small time scales, on larger time scales, huger, huger increase and decreases in the price. And we asked the questions uh, whether we could quantify uh, this behavior in the beginning of a trend, in the course of a trend, and the end point of a positive trend in this case. What happens in the beginning, what happens during the trend, and at the end point of this trend. And for this we analyzed a huge amount of uh, financial transactions. Uh, these transactions, this data uh, stems from uh, the European Exchange Eurex and also NYSE in uh, New York. And uh, the question we ask what happens with the volume in the course of the trend and also the intertrade times, the time intervals between individual transactions because we have the very, a very precise timestamp of all these financial um, information. And uh, for this, we introduced a renormalization time scale. We collected all these sequences, all these different uh, trends in uh, yeah, tons of financial data, so to say. And uh, the ultimate goal was to, to identify the general signature in this uh, price time series. And what we find is that uh, the transaction volume, it starts on a very normal level and the volume steadily increases from low uh, values to, to higher values. And if we reach the end point of this trend, so if we talk about a positive trend which starts at a local minimum and goes to a local maximum value, then the volume close to this local maximum value uh, increases dramatically. There's a spike in, in the volume as uh, yeah, market uh, uh, participants and then trader know uh, obviously but uh, we were able to quantify this effect we can write down the equation um, for this increase in volume and some power law behavior with a very unique exponent and so we can say we can uh, predict what's the value what's the number of average volume given the position or the progress in your trend and the volume, the maximum of the volume coincides with the extreme value in the price. So this could be a ma maximum or minimum, of course. And afterwards, the volume decreases, and it's a very symmetric uh, process. So the increase is very similar to this decrease. We have the same exponent in our equation, and uh, this behavior is also valid on very different time scales. We, we started uh, this data set uh, has a time granularity of 10 milliseconds. And uh, the same behavior we find on the time scales of milliseconds, but also seconds, minutes, and the, yeah, until the, the, the maximum uh, time lag we, we analyzed was 100 days using probably 60 years of stocks of the components of the S&P 500. And so it's a very uh, unique and universal law which holds or uh, which is valid over nine orders of magnitude, which delivers, which gives us uh, uh, insights uh, about the trading processes in the market and um, it's not only about the volume, we were also able to use the time intervals between individual transactions and they show the same very uh, unique uh, behavior but for the intertrade times of course they go down. Um, there are more and more transactions if we reach extreme points in the market. And this decrease, this dip in the intertrade times if we reach local extreme values it's also, yeah, we also are able to quantify this with the power law uh, behavior and afterwards there's an increase, it goes back to the average value. And it's also a very symmetric shape, that this decrease and afterwards the increase, which tells us something about the switching points on very different timescales in the market.